This video is about CERTI, which is a library I've seen on a reference a number of times on projects, so I thought I'd look it up and see what it was about and make a video on it. So I've got some data here that I want to use inside my Rust program. The program itself has a structure called customer, which aligns with the data in the JSON file. So let's go ahead and start by bringing in the CERTI dependencies. Since we're going to use the automated uh, serialization and deserialization generation. We'll need the uh, the derive feature in CERTI and we'll need to bring in CERTI JSON as well so that we get our uh, JSON serialization and deserialization. Alright, let's go back to our data and let's go ahead and copy the data fields over into our source code so we can just paste them in and just keep, a, keep track of what's going on. So let's start by bringing in CERTI, and we'll bring in the serialization and deserialization uh, attributes. And let's go ahead and mark it up with a derived macro. And deserialize, serialize, and deserialize. Okay, great. Now, um, we have a problem. We have this start date which doesn't align with that start date name. So to make the names align, we're going to head and use a CERTI annotation called rename, which will allow us uh, to, to have the name line up between our JSON and our data structure. Now that, that's not the issue that uh, the Visual Studio Code is complaining about. That's complaining about a different issue, which is we need to bring in CERTI support into Chrono, the date time library I'm using, um, so that uh, it understands how to serialize and deserialize. So just by bringing it in, we're fine. Okay, now we have this wrapper struct, and that wrapper struct is common in like HadeOS libraries where we don't return just raw data. So let's go ahead and create a wrapper struct called data and it's going to just uh, mirror what we've got in our sample data and so we'll give it a, a data set name which is a string and a size which is an integer and our data which is a vector of customers and we'll also add the annotations to uh, serialize and deserialize this wrapper struct as well. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and suck it in from the file and spit it back out just to make sure we got the exact same. We're, we're actually doing this correctly. So let's bring in file reference and let's open an input file pointing to customers JSON and that we'll use to read in the data and we'll go ahead and unwrap it and uh, then we'll create a mutable customers using a wrapper data object and we'll read use the certi json from reader to read it in from our file and that's our input file okay great now, like I said, what we're going to do is write it right back out just to make sure we've got it. So let's create an output file. Ooh, let's not forget to unwrap our data. Uh, let's go ahead and create an output file, and we'll call that testoutput.json. And unwrap that. Great. And then uh, we will go ahead and use the certi JSON to writer to write it out to uh, our output file and we'll pass it a reference to our customer data and we'll go ahead and unwrap that so we don't get a warning okay let's take a look and make sure we've actually changed read in our read out written out our data by changing something and it will change the first name of one of the customers to Abercrombie string from Abercrombie and okay now we've got all that let's go ahead and run it okay and let's take a look at our output file that test output 
and let's clean it up and compare it to our other file in customers JSON. Okay, that looks good. They kind of match. And we see that the name has changed to Abercrombie. Okay, great. Hey, uh, thank you for watching. And if you uh, have any idea for other topics that you might want me to cover, I'll leave that down in the notes. Uh, and thanks again for watching.